Okay, as promised, I am vlogging much less these days, focusing on other things. I feel um, inclined, however, to share this with you. Uh, LaVieEmote.com is uh, the source for this article, I believe. I don't see a particular newspaper being cited as the source. So I don't know what this is, but this was on my yahoo.fr opening page, and I clicked on the news story. Now, it's I'm American-born, and I'm still American, but I'm French now, too, and I've been in France since 1994. And I often have to take time to explain to people back in the United States, for example, that France is an entirely different system, there is a parliament here. We are not under Anglo-Saxon law. And um, everything uh, as far as real estate and taxation and stuff is quite different here from what I knew in the United States. And I've been away for so long. I'm no longer an expert on the United States. But I was 37 when I um, expatriated. Now, um, okay, it does cite a newspaper source for this. It's Le Parisien, which is kind of the New York Daily News of uh, the Paris region, and it's known as Aujourd'hui in the rest of France. It's, it's really not a very uh, sophisticated newspaper. Okay, it's a daily newspaper. Not very uh, highfalutin. It says uh, that 10% of those who live in what's called an HLM here earn more than 4,000 euros per month. Now, HLM, which is HLM in English, I can never remember what that stands for, except I think the L is logement and, um, oops, where did it go? There it is. Uh, M is uh, moyenne, I think. It, H might be habitation. I'm not sure. But these are uh, prevalent in France since World War II, although some of them date back to earlier times, um, and uh, such as the 20s and 30s, uh, and were uh, perhaps communist or socialist in their orientation. And these are rather they frequently look pretty ugly from the outside, but they can be very nice places to live. And um, there isn't a landlord per se. It's kind of uh, it's kind of communal. Now I own my apartment where I live. I live in a private building across from a big housing project which is being replaced with a new housing project because the buildings are getting old. And they don't have either co-ops or condos here. So I'll just leave it at that and say it's a different system. Now these HLM are to help people who earn less money or who are of only modest means. And my husband grew up in one of these, uh, just south of Paris. Looks quite dreadful from the outside, but the apartment was, in fact, quite nice inside, uh, very bright, very airy. And it depends on who your neighbors are, and um, some of these uh, get to be very nasty, and they do have crime problems and stuff. Um, but generally, these are desirable places to live, and the waiting list is extremely long to get in one, into one. And I speak from experience because due to some marital uh, situations that I have here, which I will not get into, it was determined by some social workers and doctors and whatnot that my life was in danger. So in 2008, I was encouraged to apply for housing in an HLM, and I've done so. I have to renew it every year 
it's a lot of paperwork. I have to show them all new documentation and I have to do it on time. Uh, the waiting list, I expect it to be maybe 10 or 15 years and uh, I have no children so I have absolutely no chance of getting any kind of temporary emergency shelter here anywhere in France. This has been told to me time and time again and I know it's true and I've done plenty of looking on my own. Um, I've asked for something which is adapted to my disability. Uh, it would have to be a ground floor apartment or first floor apartment uh, with an elevator. And I, mm, well, okay, enough said. Waiting, the waiting list is extremely long. So, you know, they're talking about you've got people in these apartments who really shouldn't be there anymore. And uh, I do know that when my husband's parents retired, um, he had gotten married uh, to me a couple of two, three years before, and we moved out. I had been staying for five months in his bedroom with him in that apartment. I was not welcome. <laughs> we got our own place and moved out. And right away, it became an issue, uh, you know, th they had a two-bedroom apartment, and that was really too much. It was too much space for them. And their neighbor across the hall um, had to leave uh, because he was in uh, too large of an apartment. Uh, a good solution was found. He's okay. You know, they don't, they don't kick you out. It does take a long time you know to make the appropriate changes and to be fair to people but uh, they informed the management administration of their HLM that their only child had married and moved out and they were getting ready to retire and they would not hang on to the place unnecessarily so they didn't they did the right thing they kept everybody informed and um, they moved out and moved out to the country, which was a big mistake. <laughs> but uh, that's what they did. They were honest about it. And um, they had a decent place to live for decades, really decades. It was, it was very good for them. They were able to save some money and get ahead. And um, they never did earn very much money. They were definitely working class, middle class. Um, but if all of these people, this 10%, were either allowed to stay where they are and charged h higher monthly payments, which were more in line with, f you know, free market rental costs, that would be a good thing. And some of them could be relocated. And it would free up about 700,000 of these HLM here in France, which is a lot, and it, that would be very good. There are more than a million people on the waiting list for these things. 1.2 million, I think it says here. A complaint has been filed formally in Belgium about this unfair, quite intolerable situation. And... Um, I don't know. Let me know what you think about this. Uh, again, um, you know, decent housing, which is appropriate in size, is very, very, very important. If you need something subsidized, okay. Um, my spouse actually says uh, that his coworker earns quite good money. He's a single man. He's there alone and he's in an HLM. Yeah, and uh, I found out he pays about 500 euros a month, which is kind of kind of a lot, but really he can afford it. And you really wonder, why is he there? Because he's had this job a long time. He earns very good money. You know, why does he get a subsidized apartment? <laughs> you know? <laughs> okay, perhaps I'd better not go there. Um, Hmm. Okay, I'll just leave it at that. I'm sure there are other things I want to say, but they don't quite come to mind. Uh, again, the uh, system is very different here in France. 
I think a lot of Americans think that it's a big benefits free for all here and that this is this total nanny state. You know, we don't have food stamps here. Uh, the main food bank is not open in the summer at all, in the warm weather. And uh, it's very overtaxed. I mean, I mean, they're really under a lot of strain. And uh, gleaning is legal here in France. Um, but it's, you know, the, the basic monthly welfare benefit, which is not for life, it's a welfare to work program here. Uh, I believe that the basic monthly benefit is under 400 euros a month. Do not quote me on that, please. That was the last time I checked. And um, so that's not much money in U.S. dollars. And a third of the people in France who qualify for this don't even bother. They're too proud to take benefits, uh, a lot of them. And it's absolute misery to try to survive on that. Even if you get full disability, um, it's it's really very, very, very little. Uh, all right. Okay, that's it. Bye.